You hear him called many different things on the field. Blue, ref, or sometimes a few different explicatives. But commonly, he is called an umpire. And most often, he is not the most popular working man on the field. When a situation happens, the coach is upset. He thinks that the umpire has either made a mistake in rule application or just flat out missed a call. But what fans and coaches don't realize is that this guy isn't your casual fan who just decided to one day throw on a mask and try his luck behind home plate. I don't think the average fan understands all of the training that's necessary for a person to umpire. So as the common fan, I decided to give it a whirl. Hey, hey. Well, they say the journey to becoming an ump is not the easiest one. I'm about to find out myself, though, as I walk through these doors, I'm going to start my trek to become an ump. First up, it was time to go back to my college roots and bust out the old pen and pad. Umpires go through five two-hour classes to cover ten major rule categories. And it's not as simple as three strikes equals one out. It was rules like what a player can and cannot wear, what type of bat is legal, and hypothetical situations that may occur on the field of play. There are some cases where, you know, if you got runners on the same bag, um, and then you get some sort of obstruction call, then there's a chance that uh, it's affecting the other runner as well. This stuff's pretty in-depth. thought I knew what a bat was, but now I'm looking at these rules and I'm not even sure what a bat is anymore. They're talking about lumber, they're talking about you can have holes in certain areas. This is pretty intense stuff. I'm not sure I can remember all this. Luckily, I wasn't the only newcomer feeling overwhelmed. I played baseball my whole life, so I kind of thought I had a grasp of it. And then you get in these rule books and you just learn all these different aspects of the game that you just didn't know were there. Even seasoned veterans like Jim Peranto remember back to their rookie days. I was scared to death. Uh, I was nervous. All the veterans that had been there and I wanted to be like them. But luckily all of these future umpires including myself were not in it alone. Every year we have new rules come out and the classes present the information and then allow some great discussion so that we can remember the goods and the bads of the old rules, the new rules, and how we apply them all together. And after many hours of studying, it was time to test my knowledge. A 100-question test for every umpire. Whether you're a rookie or a 30-year veteran, you have to pass the test. If you don't, then you don't put on the mask. Well, it's the moment of truth. I could miss 30, and basically, if I do, I'm an umpire. So how many I miss, Jim? You missed 10. You got all 90%. Right. That's an A. It's an outstanding job. All right. Congratulations. Awesome. I'm, I'm excited to get Welcome out there. Welcome to the Grand Junction High School Baseball Umpires Association. Be there, be ready, be set. Kirk Knowles has been an umpire since 1984, and he's called games here in the Grand Valley since 1995. But even he sometimes can't remember all of his responsibilities as an ump on the diamond. Uh, do I have third towards me as well? I have third towards me as well. Each umpire has separate and distinct roles on the diamond. And depending on how many runners are on base will determine where your responsibility lies. Then things get really complicated when you add or subtract another ump on the field. Being able to uh, advance from a two-man mechanic, uh, which is a two-man team of umpires, to a three-man team of umpires. He's out! But luckily for Knowles and Peranto, they have the rest of their crew to help them out on the field. Whatever it takes to let your partner know that you're in position to help him out and to verbalize where are you. There are three teams on that baseball field and anybody who knows anything about team concept knows that one of the most important things is communication. And if that doesn't seem overwhelming enough, then let's try our luck at calling strikes. Huh. I thought jumping behind home plate would be simple. You crouch down, watch the pitch, pray the catcher doesn't let the ball hit you, and then call a ball or a strike. But there was much more to it, starting with the equipment by the way a guy handles his mask, how comfortable he is out there working, working his plate game. Then mastering your strike calls and gaining some confidence. You guys will find out how many calls you can get away with, whether they're right or wrong, just because you look like you know what you're doing. And even how to position yourself behind home plate. If I'm down here, I can't see that pitch. It's just like your camera on a tripod. You're, this is my tripod. I'm locking it in with my pads on my chest protector. When you get ready to get into the slot, always step slot side foot first. Learn how to set up behind the catcher, learn how to take some pitches. Now it's time for the real thing. Let's try this out. Kyle, jump in there. It didn't start out well. Slow down. 
Oh, time. Where'd the glove go? It's a ball. Then I got the hang of it. Good. I gained some confidence and started to get comfortable enough to try out my strike three call. Getting behind home plate made me realize just how tough this job is. But with a little bit of help and some analyzation of my performance, I felt I was well on my way for suiting up for a real game. It's all about timing. Lots to remember.